There's an old uh, meme that took place as a result of the, the Canucks message board. They drafted Luke Bourdon. They passed on Anze Kopitar. They should have drafted Kopitar. Anze Kopitar, at the time he was drafted, everybody knew how talented he was, but he was Slovenian. And there was some de some debate about whether or not a Slovenian was going to be an NHLer and how good was he really, what was going to happen when he played against men. Turned out, not too bad. It wasn't too bad. Uh, he came over in 2006, and from then until now, it's been great. There you go, and we're done. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I wanted to say that uh, I had meant to do this video last week, and I had, I had meant to do videos on other guys reaching milestones. For instance, Eric Carlson reached a milestone of 500 points, and I need to do a video on that. But with the trade deadline and the rumors and everything else going on, I just didn't have any place to put him. So, on to Kopitar fans, you're in luck. He now has 806 points, but we're going to do this as the 800 points video. Um, in 06-07, he came in as a rookie. Uh, 72 games, scores 20 goals, 41 assists, 61 points. Very, very solid player right from his rookie season. Uh, no trouble at all adjusting to the NHL. Second year, 82 games, 32 goals, 45 assists, 77 points. No sign of, of sophomore jinx, no sign of struggles in his second year after a fantastic first year. His third year, 82 games, 27 goals, 39 points, 66, or 39 assists, 66 points. Kopitar again, playing very, very well. Um, and, and along the way, the Kings are getting better. So not only is Kopitar very solid and a, and a key player for the Kings, but the Kings themselves as a team are getting better. In 09-10, 82 games played, 34 goals, 37 assists, 71 points. Um, so 30 goals looked like it was right around where he'd score. That was his career year goals-wise, was right here. 10-11, 75 games, 25 goals, 48 assists, 73 points. Kopitar? Fantastic player, and, and I'm not going to get into the contracts with him, because here's the thing. I don't think there's very many people who think Kopitar is overpaid. That was a debate with Rick Nash, the video I just did, but I, I don't see that debate here. And I don't need to show all of his, his stats, because we'll get into stats in a minute here, and what he's done. 12-13, uh, so the, the lockout season. 47 games, 10 goals, 32 assists, 42 points. And that was after 11-12, he had 82 games, 25 goals. 51 assists, 76 points. This, of course, is Stanley Cup here, Stanley Cup here. 13 14, 82 games, 29 goals, 41 assists, 70 points. Very, very consistent. 25 to 30 goals, 70 points. In, in this day and age, fantastic point totals by Anze Kopitar. 14 15, 79 games, 16 goals, 48 assists, 64 points. The only concern I have looking at 14 15 is the goal scored. That the goal scored had dropped that far. But it goes further. In 16-17, or 15-16, he had 81 games, 25 goals, 49 assists, 74 points. And he's back. He is back to a fantastic point total. In fact, outside of 11-12, that's his number one point total. 15-16 is his second highest point total that he's had in his career. Last year was a bad year for him. 76 games, 12 goals, 40 assists, 52 points. He, honestly, right here, I I figured he was done. I figured he was done as, a, as a, a, a number one player in the league. And I even did a video where I talked about there was an overtime. I'm trying to remember who they were against. I, I want to say Edmonton, but what happened was the opening faceoff in the overtime, Kopitar loses the faceoff, the opposing team skates right through and scores. And I said that night, Kopitar is not fast enough for the NHL anymore. He's lost it. He's done. And, uh, wrong. This year, 64 games played, 27 goals, 43 assists, 70 points. Kopitar's on pace for his first 30-goal season since 09-10. So, this season has been kind of a revelation for him, and he's on pace to destroy his career, career best in points. He's at 70 already. He's above a point a game, which is... Let me double check and make sure before I say it. Yeah, it's the first time he's ever been above a point a game in the season. Now, there's still a lot of hockey to be played. But the Kings turn around this year and them getting back into where they probably should be, which right now I, I, I really think the Kings will somehow get into the playoffs. Um, 
it's directly tied to Kopitar coming back and playing really, really well. Cup champ in 2012 and 2014, as I've stated here. He's an all-star in 2008, 2011, 2015. He won the Selkie Trophy in 2016, right here. Because in order to win a Selkie Trophy, you have to score a lot of points. Uh, Lady Bing, he won in 2016 as well, which is for gentlemanly play. It used to be said that the, Selk the Lady Bing Trophy was awarded to the guy that people knew probably should have had the heart, but wasn't going to win it, so they'd give it to the runner-up via the Lady Bing Trophy, which is for sportsmanship. That's what they used to say in the 80s. Gretzky wins it all the time, so they'd vote for the next best guy in the league for Lady Bing. Playoffs. 2012, he's the leading scorer. 20 games played, 8 goals, 12 assists, 20 points. 2014, he's the leading scorer in the playoffs. 26 games, 5 goals, 21 assists. One of the, the big things with Kopitar, one of the big things with Kopitar, is that this past summer we played the the World Cup championship thing. He's on Team Europe in 2017. Team Europe is created for him. The idea was, Anze Kopitar, Slovenia, you can't put them in the tournament. They'll just get killed. In order to give Kopitar a chance to, to be on a team and do something, they needed to make Team Europe. And I, I'm trying to think, you know, uh, when was the last time, if ever, that the NHL bent over backwards to get a player into a tournament and and made made it so that that tournament was designed specifically to get him into it. And 2014, he's why Slovenia was in the, uh, the, the Olympics. And I really think that if he'd been allowed to go over and the NHL had gone over, I think they would have been back in these Olympics too. So he, he, there's, there's really no debate for me. His two Stanley Cups... He's got a Selkie, he's got a Lady Bing. It's not a matter of whether or not someday we, we would see Anze Kopitar in the Hall of Fame. It's, can he be this good for long enough that voters can't deny him his place? Um, will his number be retired by the by the Kings? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's a debate we could have had with Rick Nash in the last video I did, where I would say no. I would say Columbus, Rangers, no. Uh, Boston, no two games clearly not um kopitar yes kopitar's number will be retired by the kings kopitar is their 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 leader and if if he ends up with 80 plus points and that is entirely within his reach um he's getting better as he gets older and he's had his best year in his career after what was arguably his worst and for that he has my admiration he seems to have got his speed back this year and he's looked really, really solid in any Kings game I've watched. So there you go. On to Kopitar. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. I apologize this video took this long. But again, now that the trade deadline's done, I can catch up on some of this stuff. So thank you very much for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. And I'll talk to you again soon.